Back in 1988, when I was running my first business, I thought I was doing pretty well. I had my bright red Porsche out the front to show everyone just how successful I was. But that didn't show the full picture because the business I was in required a ton of cash. I had to hold a lot of stock and give payment terms to my customers, which meant that in order for the business to grow, I had to continually leave the profits in the business. Now that's not ideal when you're in your 20s and you wanna buy apartments and flash cars and generally live the life. The problem was all my friends were being employed by large companies, so they got to spend everything they earned, whereas I didn't get to see the money that I was earning. So I did what any owner of a small business did at the time. I ran an overdraft so that I could pull the net profit out of the business and spend it on investments like a pension scheme, uh, an apartment, and of course, a nice red Porsche. Now, it was easy. The bank manager was taking me out to lunch and telling me how good of a businessman I was. And I'm embarrassed to even think about that now. However, everything changed in the summer of 1988 because that was when a new bank manager took over at my local branch of the HSBC and he wasn't so impressed with my business acumen. I remember the day he came to see me in my warehouse and asked to see the financials. So I printed out the profit and loss report and the balance sheet for him. I had no idea what he was looking at. I was just really pleased with myself because I was able to print out what he was asking for. In my mind, I was a computer genius because I used accounting software. I thought I was so ahead of my time. I mean, how could he be anything other than impressed? But unfortunately, he wasn't impressed at all because when he looked at the balance sheet, there was just 15,000 pounds of equity to support a business with a revenue of over one and a half million. The entire business was being propped up by the bank's overdraft. And they could pull that facility anytime they wanted. And he said to me, we're not here to fund your lifestyle. Now, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I was the customer here and I was a good one. I paid interest, the bank fees, and I had 150,000 in stock sitting in my warehouse. I was successful, or at least I thought I was, but the man from the HSBC quickly brought me back down to earth. He said, I don't like what I'm seeing here, 150,000 pound overdraft. The bank is very exposed here. He said, what do you think will happen when interest rates go up? Now, I just shrugged my shoulders. Interest rates were already at 10%. They couldn't go up too much more, surely. He said, I'll only be offering a facility that is 50% of the retained equity in the business going forward. Now, seriously, in one meeting, he was going to effectively close down my business, and he could because he was the one funding it. By ripping out the profits and relying on the bank for finance, I'd effectively given them control of my future. Now, what followed was a, a bit of backtracking and a bit of begging, but he did agree to give me a sporting chance to save my business and it would require a 12-month financial plan supported by monthly reports delivered in person to his office covering up-to-date profit and loss and balance sheet reports. He was gonna take a fixed and floating charge over both my stock and my debtors, which meant he was gonna be following the numbers very, very closely. Now, I knew he was serious, and at any moment he could pull the pin and effectively end my business, so I had to learn quickly. I immediately bought two books, Accounting for Non-Accountants and Accounts Demystified. Now, weirdly enough, I really enjoyed reading them. Double entry bookkeeping, creditors and debtors, assets and liabilities, sales cycles, it was fascinating and I loved it. Once I knew what he was talking about, I went to work and produced a detailed plan for the year ahead. Revenue, cost of sales, and every single expense was budgeted for. The thing is, 
I was no longer in charge of my own business. I was effectively reporting to a, a manager each month and giving him a full report on what was going on inside the company. And I loved it. It gave me a level of accountability that I'd never experienced before. And as interest rates rose from 10% to over 17% in the next few months, I can honestly say he saved my business. One interesting thing happened at the end of the 12 month period. I delivered on what I'd said I would in terms of revenue and retained net profit. And in return, the overdraft was set at 100% of equity rather than the 50% that he originally wanted due to the significant reduction in risk to the bank, which saved my business. However, he still expected that ratio to reduce down to 50% over the next 12 months, which was fine as I wasn't too keen on continuing to pay 17% interest any longer. But it was the forecast versus actual expenses that got me really excited. I remember sending him a fax because that was how we emailed or sent a text back in the day. I sent him a message and said, did you see how close I got to the forecast? 0.1%. Now I thought that was amazing. A number that I'd forecast 12 months earlier had been well and truly nailed. I thought he was gonna be so impressed with my business skills, but all he said was, yes I did. Now, I never really liked that bank manager as much as the previous one who used to take me out to Chinese restaurants for lunch, but he has probably been the most influential person in my business career and has helped to shape the way I do business planning, even to this very day. Right now, I wanna help you to steer your building company through the troubled waters ahead. And you need to start by getting your financials bang up to date as of the end of last month. Before you do anything else, you need a very clear picture of the current financial health of your building company. Don't rely on your accountant. This is something every single builder can and must do themselves, which is why the Association of Professional Builders has mapped out everything for you step-by-step step without any jargon. Click on the link below to learn more.